Hello and welcome to Top Shelf Board Games. I'm Hubba and today we're going to be learning how to play Francis Drake. In Francis Drake, players will be collecting provisions, guns, supplies, crew members, meeting with the professionals of the world, admirals and governors, and then sailing out into the new world to conquer towns, forts, and the Spanish Galleon. Let's go to the table and learn how to play. A game of Francis Drake is played over three voyages or three rounds. This is tracked by the voyage marker. And each round is made up of a preparation phase and a sailing phase. The preparation phase revolves around the track here at the top, while the sailing phase revolves around the bottom part of the board. Let's go over the preparation phase and, and what you'll be doing. Players will be placing their discs down onto the different locations in turn order. Yellow will go first, red, green, and then blue. The rules to placing a disc, you have to place a disc farther down the track than your previously placed colored disc. Um, whether it's yellow's turn again, yellow has to play, um, can't play on the crew again, he has to play on one of the other locations down the track. You can skip as many locations as you want, and when you play your disc on there, you'll take any of the resources that are on that circle and put them onto your player board. Then it'll be the next player's turn. And the turns will continue to go back and forth until everybody has decided to set sail into the harbor. At any time during the preparation phase, if you feel that you've collected enough resources, you can set sail. You'll take your marker and you'll move it over to the harbor in the, in the furthest right open spot. That will determine the sailing order during the sailing phase. All right, let's go over the different locations on the board. On the crew area, when you place your marker there, you'll be able to take two gray cubes from the supply and place them onto your player board. Each board has a spot for the different tokens as you collect them. Going first will get you two and then, you know, one if you were the last one to place there. The shipyard, allows, if you're the first one to play there, you're able to take one black cube, which is a gun, which is needed to defeat forts and galleons during the sailing phase. And the shipyard also allows you to upgrade your frigate to a galleon. So you would take off your marker and put on your galleon. In order to attack the uh, galleons that are out and about, you have to have a galleon in order to do so. The second person to go to the shipyard would only be able to upgrade their ship. The guns, if you're the first one, you'll get two, two cubes, otherwise you'll only get one. Supplies, you'll be able to get four barrels if you're the first one there. Um, second only gets two barrels, and third to go there only gets one barrel. Barrels determine how far out into the world that you can travel. If you look at the board, you'll see that each location or area of the board is broken down one, two, three, and four. For each barrel that you have on your player board, that'll determine how far into the world you can travel. If you only have three barrels, then when you place your mission disc down, you'll only be able to play up to level three area. You won't be able to put any uh, mission discs out into the level four area. The queen, if you go to her, she allows you to upgrade your ship. She also gives you one gun and one purple cube. Purple cubes are trade goods, and these are used to trade at the uh, different trade ports at each of the different locations. You'll be able to do a one for one trade. The tavern, whoever is the first one to go there will be able to roll the black dice and will be able to add one to it. So in this case, it would be a five. And then you get to collect the corresponding crew members. On a five to six, you get three. Three to four, you get two crew members. And if you roll a one to two, you'll gain a ghost ship. The ghost ship is basically a dummy marker that allows you to uh, play last during the mission phase so you can see where the different discs have been placed out. And so that's what the ghost ship allows you to do. If you're the second one to go to the tavern, then you will only roll the die with no modification. The admiral gives you the admiral token. You'll take it and place it next to your player board. You'll also take three of the random ship frigate tokens, which you will be able to place out just before the sailing phase. Also, at the end of the sailing phase, for every gold token that is still on the board, 
you will gain one point if you have the Admiral. The trade goods allow you to get two cubes if you're the first one or one cube, uh, one purple cube. The governor is similar to the Admiral in that you'll take the governor marker, place it into your player area, and you'll also take four of the random troop counters that you'll be able to place out just before the sailing phase into the different forts. This will allow you to see how many extra guns are needed to defeat that fort. Also, the governor will, get, will give you one extra point for every silver token that is left on the board at the end of the sailing phase. Also, the governor allows you to switch positions in the harbor uh, just before you set sail. So if yellow had the governor token, just before we set sail, the, he, the governor will let, would allow yellow to switch with blue and be able to sell you know, quicker. Drake is the only place where if you put a marker there, you have to put your second marker there as well. So normally you can only place one, one, one of your tokens per location. Drake, you have to play two tokens in succession there. The first time you put your token on, you'll gain two gray cubes and two black cubes. And then on your next turn, you'll place another token down and gain either one gray cube or one black cube. The Pinace allows you to take a Pinace token and one crew member. What the Pinace token does is you'll put it on your player board. And what it allows you to do is when you attack one of these forts, it allows you to ignore the gun requirements of that fort. So you would actually only have to fight, you'd only have to pay crew members equal to the crew. You wouldn't have to pay any black guns if you have a pinace. The informer, if you go there, you'll gain one trade good, one purple cube. Also, during the sailing phase, after all mission discs have been placed down, you'll be able to look at the discs at different locations, but we'll go over the informer more in depth when we get into the sailing phase. The golden hind location, gives you the golden hen token. This allows you to go first no matter what if you're on if your mission disc is at that location. The hen goes before even the one. The second to last location is the investor spot. If you place your token on the investor, everybody can place their token there. It's not limited to just one person, but all players can place their token there. When you place there, you'll choose either the top half of the investor token to use or the bottom half. The first half allows you to get two guns and one crew, or one gun and two crew. The bottom half allows you to upgrade your frigate to a galleon. Likewise, you'll also have to discard your investor token, and you'll lose this investor token for the rest of the entire game. Also, part of the investor token is you'll lose four victory points from your total points. The last space is the dock side. This is the last chance to gain any supplies, guns, or crews that you need. Anybody can place their token there. You'll place it on the circle that matches your color and take either one supply, one gun, or one crew. After the dock side, you must, set, you must go into the harbor and end your turn. When all players have entered the harbor, the sailing phase will begin. Now that everybody has entered the harbor, we can start the sailing phase. Red, being in the first position, will be the first one to set sail, and also the first one to place a mission disc onto the board. But before we do that, we need to set up the, the sailing phase. We need to make sure that each location has either a silver token, a gold token, or a, a jewel on it. So all these need to be placed out. Once your jewels have been placed out onto the board, your gold, silver, and your jewels, the Admiral will then place his tokens out onto the board. Next to each of the galleons is a spot for a frigate token. And whoever has the Admiral will take one of the frigate tokens that he has. He can look at them and then determine where they're gonna be placed. This will allow the Admiral to know which galleon is gonna have how many, how many guns it'll take to defeat him. So if you place this one here, you put it face down and he knows that it now needs five guns to defeat this galleon. Once those are put face down secretly, the Admiral is finished with his, his bonus turn. Whoever has the Governor will then take the troop counters and will place them onto each of the troop locations just like the uh, frigates were for the Admiral. You can look at the back of them and it'll tell you how many extra troops or crew members are needed to defeat that location. So if he puts this one here, it's only going to take one crew and one gun to defeat this fort. 
Then you would put it secretly down. And once those have been played down, the governor turn will end. After the governor has finished placing his tokens out, players will then count up all of their supply barrels and place their cube onto the navigation spot that matches how many supplies they have. So if red has two supplies, then he would place his token out there on the two. This, a lot, this is so you know when you place your mission counters out, blue can play in this area and any of the other areas, whereas yellow and green can't go into there but can do any of the other ones. And red will be able to place his mission markers on any of the two locations or the one locations, but not three or four. After the navigation tokens have been played out, players will play their mission discs in turn order. You'll take one of your discs, it doesn't matter which number, and place it face down onto a location. Each player will continue to do this. If a mission disc is already in an area you want to go to, you'll stack the mission disc on top. Once all mission discs have been placed out, the informer can now do his special action. The informer can choose one location where he has a mission disc and look at all of the mission discs that are there. He can then choose to take, he can then choose to exchange any two mission discs that he has. He could take this one and exchange it with another one, or he could take this one and exchange it with this one. Or the informer can look at the stack and then take his mission disc and move it to any other location where he doesn't already have a disc. Once the informer is finished, we then reveal the mission markers and put them into order, then do the sailing phase. Starting with the hind marker first, and then one, two, three, four. Once all of the discs have been revealed, players will take back any of their ghost tokens that they have. And players will then sail their ship to their starting, their starting mission token. Whoever has the hind token will sail out first. This being red, he would take his ship, put it on the hind token, take his ghost ship, and put it in the harbor so we know the turn order that people were in to break any ties. Green will sell out to his first location and players will do this in subsequent order. Once everybody has made it to their starting token, the hint player will go first. When you attack a fort, if you're the first one, you'll flip over the troop token and then you will discard uh, crew members and gun equal to the rating at the fort. In this case, we just need one crew member to, be, to defeat the troops. We also need one gun to defeat the fort. So we'll discard one gray cube and one black cube. As soon as we've defeated the fort, we'll, re, we'll move our token down, showing that we've defeated a fort this round, which will get us extra points at the end of the round. We will immediately score the three points indicated by the crown symbol. If you are the first one to attack a location, you'll also get to collect the uh, silver, gold, or jewel that's there and put it into your treasure chest, which will score points at the end of the game for you. The red would then put his ship on the first mission disc and then flip his hint token face down. Once two discs are put face down at a location, then nobody else that has mission discs there are able to attack or trade at that location that has two face down mission discs. Then everybody can go ahead and resolve their area that they're at. Remembering if you're the first one there, you'll flip over the counter, discard any gray cubes and black cubes equal to what's at the location. For the trade goods, whoever's first will discard one of their purple cubes and collect either a, one of the commodities that are at that trade location. So we could collect the sugar or the tobacco. After everybody has completed their turn, they flip over their mission discs and players would then sail to their second location and resolve the area there. The galleon, in order to attack a galleon, you, you also have to have a galleon in order to be able to attack this. You'll flip over the frigate marker, which will show how many extra black guns you'll have to, to discard. In this case, only one. Remember to collect any victory points, and if you're the first one, you'll collect the jewel and put it into your treasure chest. And players will continue to do this, resolving each of their mission discs. If at any time you decide that you don't want to, that you're done, you don't want to do any more missions, or you don't have enough cubes to complete a mission, then you can set sail back to the homeland and return to Plymouth. If you're the first one to return to Plymouth, you'll be granted a hero's bonus and gain two victory points. 
as long as you have defeated either one of the towns, one of the forts, or one of the galleons. The towns are pretty similar to the forts. The only difference with the town is they look like this and they're not worth as many points. Um, you also only have to have one gray cube to defeat a town. Players will continue to do this until everybody has returned back to Plymouth. After everybody has returned to Plymouth, a scoring phase will take place based on the types of conquests that you completed during your round. Players will look down here. Red has completed, he defeated a town, a fort, and a galleon. Defeated all three. That'll grant Red an extra 10 victory points, moving him up on the track. Yellow defeated two of those conquests, which will get him four victory points. And also blue completed two, so he will gain an extra four victory points. At the end of a voyage, after you've scored your conquests, whoever has the governor token will also gain one victory point for each silver token that remains on the board. So in this case, he would get three. The admiral would gain one gold token for each gold token that's left. Because there's no gold tokens on the board, he wouldn't get any extra points this voyage. Any of the trade commodities that you collected will remain on your player board. And these will be scored at the very end of the game after Voyage 3. For every set that you have, you'll, you'll gain extra victory points. To set up for the new voyage, you'll move the voyage marker to Voyage 2. Players will discard all their uh, guns and supplies and crew members and any tokens that they've collected, aside from, from the commodities, will be returned back to the supply board. Players will also take off all of their preparation discs and return them to their board. Play players will also downgrade their ships back to the regular frigates. Ghost tokens will be returned. All the mission tokens will be returned. Play order will then be determined by the order that players are in point-wise. So yellow being last would actually move into the first position. Blue and green are tied, where green set sail before blue. He would get the second position, then blue, and red would be last to start the second voyage. Players will also refresh the commodity track, adding in any ones that were purchased. The galleon tokens will be taken off and shuffled and put face up uh, randomly around the different locations. And you are now set up to start your second voyage. This will also happen at the end of Voyage 2. You'll set up for Voyage 3. And at the end of Voyage 3, a final scoring round will be completed. The final scoring round, the only difference is that you will add up all of your commodities and gain victory points equal to your commodities as well as your jewels that you've collected. If you look up here, for every four different commodities that you collect, you'll get 26 victory points. For every three different ones, 16. For every two different ones, you'll get eight points. And for every, if you only have one different one, then you'll get two victory points for that. You'll gain victory points for each of the jewels that you've collected in your treasure chest. Um, for the silver, you'll gain three points for each of them, four for each of the gold, and five for each of the jewel tokens. After that scoring has been completed, along with the end of voyage scoring, players will look at their final score and whoever has the highest total will win the game. And that is how you play Francis Drake.